All right. So today we are talking about chapter 24, which is about web scraping, um, specifically the RFEST package for the most part. Um, and something that I think is really interesting in this chapter is he starts talking about kind of like the legal issues and how to be polite about it and all that kind of thing, which is good when you're doing uh, web scraping to make sure that you're not going to get banned from whatever website you're trying to get data from. Um, I just realized that I have notes in this, which don't, I'm too used to working in Quarto. Uh, they don't render in here. So uh, let me get those notes up so that I can make sure I have them, even though they won't show up for me easily. Um, sorry, one moment. Okay. Uh, there we go. It's funny. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start by deciding whether to scrape data from a web page. Um, you know, whether we should, whether we can. Um, we're gonna, uh, <laughs> and yes, I am going to be moving everything to Quarto, uh, probably at like right after this book club, basically, unfortunately. Um, we're gonna try to recognize enough HTML to find our way around a web page. And I actually didn't go into this learning objective as much as I thought I was going to. The original or the previous book club mentioned that, and we do a tiny bit, but just, just a tiny, tiny bit of HTML. Um, we're going to extract tables from web pages, and then we're going to extract other data from web pages. These last two bullets, I changed the order from what they are in the book, because I think it's easier, like this is really easy to do, and so I wanted to show this and then build up to the more complicated things. So we will do that. All right. Um, and like this quote, from the book is very important. If the data isn't public, non-personal or factual, or you're scraping the data specifically to make money with it, you'll need to talk to a lawyer. So don't uh, trust anything or not. It's not that you shouldn't trust it, but don't just assume that because uh, you read it in this book, you are legally covered. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. Headley isn't a lawyer. Uh, Mina is not a lawyer. Uh, so um, if you're doing something to make money with it, it is good to talk to a lawyer. Uh, but on the other hand, um, facts generally are not copyrightable, at least in the US. Uh, it's different, depends where you are. So uh, he talks about, and it's my favorite example too, that like a recipe is a list of facts. And so you can't copyright a recipe. And that's why recipe blogs tell you their life story before they get to the recipe, because they can copyright that part. Um, and the same with cookbooks and all those kinds of things that you have to put other stuff in there or it isn't considered uh, copyrightable work. Um, so <laughs> code is not just an arrangement of facts. There have been lots of uh, cases around that because they are uh, like the, the order of them is very important in code. Um, and so that's, uh, where it, I think where the legal standings stand for the U S uh, but it is complicated. And that's why, again, if you're doing anything, uh, for money, probably talk to a lawyer to make sure. Um, he mentions the polite package. I'm actually going to talk about that a lot more at my book club on Wednesday. Um, it is a way to, um, try to respect any policies the website has laid out. Um, there is a file called robots.txt that some websites will uh, implement and it kind of is supposed to tell you what's okay for automated systems to look at and how you can access things. Um, really a, a useful thing is robots.txt often tells you if there's an API that you should be using instead. So um, that is going to be something that, again, we talk about on Wednesday. Uh, he mentions checking the terms of service, but he also says, you know, take it with a grain of salt because a lot of times they're going to claim more legal protections than they really can. Uh, and so, like, you're safe if you follow the terms of service, but you might also be safe even if you ignore some things in the terms of service. It depends 
like they might cancel your account or block you, but you're not going to be legally liable in a lot of cases. Again, I'm not a lawyer. Don't take that as advice. Uh, just check that kind of thing. And then um, a big thing is if there's personally identifiable, uh, person, personally identifiable information, um, PII, just be careful about that. Anything that is individual people, that gives a lot more people reason to be mad at you for scraping the data. And so generally you want to avoid that unless you have a very good reason to be scraping uh, personal information. All right. Any thoughts on that before I move on? All right. So just a tiny, tiny bit about, about HTML so we have enough to follow along. Uh, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is the language of uh, the web. You know, you can see we are looking at an HTML page right now. Um, it has a hierarchical structure and um, it's made up of elements where you have a tag and then you can have attributes and then, you know, different attributes inside of the opening tag, the start tag. Uh, and then you can have some sort of content and then a closing tag or an end tag. Um, all uh, HTML is roughly like this, like there are some exceptions, but for the most part, it'll look like this. You have an opening tag, content, end tag. There are some where there's a shortcut where there'll just be a slash here because there's no content. And so you kind of combine the opening and end tag. Um, and then elements nest inside of other elements. Um, and the nested elements are called children. We don't really get into that a lot here, but that can be important when you're trying to do some really, some more advanced, um, uh, advanced work looking at, uh, with XML2 or some of the advanced things in RFest. Um, you can in Chrome and I think it's still in like most browsers, there is something equivalent to inspect or view page source. So inspect will take you like right to the element. I think you can see this, let me, okay. Yeah, so um, this is really useful when you are trying to scrape content because you can say, okay, I'm trying to look at this list and oh, okay, uh, you know, when I hover over things, it shows me what I have, what I am hovering over. This thing is called UL, that's unordered list. So the entire thing is an unordered, unordered list. Or you can see uh, this, there's some div, uh, div is like a division of content. Um, it has an ID, which we'll see, and it has a, uh, we'll see how that can be useful. And it has a class or one or more classes separated by spaces. Um, these little, like those identifiers are really useful when you're trying to find some specific thing on a page. He also talks about uh, a way to do it kind of automatically, but uh, almost always I end up doing this, even if I use the selector gadget that he talks about, um, because it doesn't always work to use the selector gadget, but this will let you kind of explore. Um, sometimes selector gadget will do something like really generic, like, you know, I'm trying to get this bullet and it'll say, you know, which is here, let me inspect to get right to there. And it'll say, okay, you want to select book summary or, or sorry, uh, book body, because that thing you're trying to get is inside a book body. And it, it, like, you have to tell it, well, no, 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 I don't want everything else. And so versus if you kind of start from what you're trying to get, you can see, well, okay, that's an LI that's inside of a UL that is inside of an LI that's inside of a different UL. You can use that to kind of make your selections more um, specific, which we'll see uh, in a moment. Um, Arvest is the package for scraping web pages um, because Hadley was making a pun about harvesting data from web pages and he's from New Zealand. And so he says Arvest uh, and it starts with an R and whatever. So anyway, um, it's a good package. It, it's really a wrapper around uh, the XML2 package and a few other things, but it, it's like focused just on scraping data from web pages. Um, we don't get into it here, but basically if you're scraping and you can't quite do it with RVEST, a lot of times you'll just need to use some other function from XML2 that RVEST doesn't wrap. Um, but for the most part, you can get by with RVEST almost all the time. Uh, and the most... Uh, or the first functions we're going to look at are read HTML, which you can use to load the HTML that you want to scrape, and then 
HTML table, which is a nice shortcut function that takes the thing that you read with read HTML. You can do extraction past that, but once you do HTML table, it does all the steps of finding the table and extracting all the content into uh, a data frame. So if we look at this, this is the, um, actually I wanna load this up so we can see what we're scraping. Um, this is a table, so you can kind of, you know, tables can be styled in different ways, but you can see that it has kind of a, you know, table structure. And if we uh, inspect, we can see that it's in this table uh, tag. It has different classes and it has, you know, elements inside of that. And we'll just go back here and just look at, so we go to that URL. We read, you, read HTML, and then we can just do HTML table directly, and that scrapes the table right into a data frame, a table, technically. Um, at this point, it's pretty ugly. Um, and I don't think he directly talked about that, but something I, I kind of agree with how he did it, did it here is get the data like as is ugly into a data frame, and then do normal like stuff we've done through the rest of the book to clean it up. That way you're not in HTML world for too long. So even if you're, you're getting, you know, maybe you wanted to split rank and title. Well, we know how to do that from other chapters of this book. So do that later after. Um, I, a lot of times will catch myself trying to like select everything kind of perfectly uh, as I'm doing the RVEST step and I'm, then that can be really slow. And so I, I realize, wait, no, save all the cleaning for once it's in R. Um, and you'll also see that there's a one here because really what happened here, since I started from the main web page, this is getting, the HTML table is getting all the tables on the page. There happened to only be one, but it's saying, okay, I got uh, that one table uh, and I will call it number one inside of a list. So to avoid that, we can use the next function, which is HTML element, which will select a specific element uh, on the page and it returns the same number of outputs as inputs. So if you send the whole page in as one object, it'll find the first whatever thing that you're describing and pull that out. So it's always you know one thing in, one thing out. That's really useful because if we have a whole bunch of, which we're gonna see in a minute, if we have a whole bunch of different things and we wanna like make a table, you want it to be the same size as what's coming in so that each column has the same number of uh, outputs. Uh, and we'll see how that works in a second. Um, so if you just put like the word thing inside of quotes, inside of HTML element, that will select a tag named thing. So if we did div, it would select anything that's a div. If we do table, it'll select anything that's a table. If you do dot and then thing, that looks for that class attribute. So again, if I pull this up, um, so this has a class of section level two unnumbered. So if I did dot section, it would get anything that has class equals or has section inside of its classes or dot unnumbered, or I could do this whole thing, dot section, dot level two, dot unnumbered, and it would kind of hone in on things that are specific to that. And similarly, hashtag or hash thing is looking for ID, which is a more specific attribute. Um, only one thing on the page I think technically only one thing of that type on the page can have that ID. Uh, and so it's a, a more specific way, but it, which can be a problem if you're trying to get all of the divs that are um, content, like in this case, actually, that's not a bad one. Um, that That is the, the whole div that has this title is div ID equals select a specific element. Um, but if you're trying to get more than that, idea often is over specific and it won't get all the instances that you're trying to get. All right. So back on the table, if we just select uh, the first, so HTML element is only gonna get one thing when we send in the whole web page. So we're getting the first table and then we do HTML table. It no longer gets a list because we were only sending one thing into it. It doesn't have more tables. Like it, it knows that it can't extract more tables. And so that's a way to avoid having the extraneous list thing. Now, 
if there were more than one table on the page, we wouldn't see them if we did this. That's why a lot of times I just leave this out, see what the result is and maybe combine them or maybe select the one I wanted. How does um, HTML table see that it has had the HTML element uh, before? How, how does the output differ? It's the, the uh, so I should, should have shown the intermediate step, I guess, because, um, I mean, it's it's a little complicated because HTML table has a whole bunch of stuff inside that is a shortcut for, um, but it sees that there is a single table element that it is starting from. And so uh, in that case, there's only the one thing to extract. Um, that right. I, I think, so I think even if we had done, um, you know, this is table, it's inside of a div. So if we had done like um, the dot lister, because that's the class of the like outer div. Um, if we had done uh, dot lister as our HTML element, it would still come back as a list because it is a list of possible things. Um, pretty sure. So the, the my hesitation on that is that HTML element is returning a single thing and I can't remember if it sees that as special, but I don't think so because it's uh, it's still the same type of thing as HTML elements, which we're gonna see in just a minute. Um, in practice, I mean, I guess if you're just doing a table, like either, like a lot of times, like I said, I'll, I'll just go straight to HTML table like we did before and then look at the list and find the one I want uh, that way. Because <laughs> for one thing, Sometimes it'll be surprising. Um, oh, I want to like uh, an example I've been playing with is the Tidy Tuesday um, README. Um, if you go to the main Tidy Tuesday site, I go, oh, I just want this table. But actually, this is a table too. It just doesn't necessarily look like a table. So if I say, oh, just give me the one table on the page, I would actually get this. Um, and so that's a case where if you're not careful, you can get the wrong thing. Um, John, I have a question yeah. for you. Go so for let's it. say I'm, I'm doing this, but with the table from the Tidy uh, Tuesday example you just showed. So if you add more rows to that table, technically in my code, it will update as long as I rerun the line of the HTML, right? Like the yes, the main yep. website. Okay. Yes, and that's I mean that's so, an example of something that's really useful for that. Kind of in general it, with our vest, uh, you want to don't over specify what you're trying to get because then you might end up missing updates. Um, if you're too careful about you know I want the first ten rows of this table, well unless you actually really want the first 10 rows, whatever they happen to be, you know, you're going to miss out if there is now an 11th row. Um, the, there is a case of that that I'm working with right now for Tidy Tuesday and actually for uh, Book Club on Wednesday, um, where I'm trying, like right now I'm being a little over specific. There are a bunch of different uh, pieces of a page that I want. Um, but I think I'm probably going to back up and uh, make it a little less specific, get all of those pieces, and then inside of R, deal with uh, cleaning them up instead of trying to assume. Because right now, uh, what it is, is it's um, different cheeses. It, I got the example from the Polite Packages uh, website. Um, and like some of them are from, um, let's say it's a cheese that's from France, it'll also have a um, region that it's from within France. But if it's from, uh, you know, I don't know, if it's from the Bahamas, it probably wouldn't have a region, it's just from the Bahamas. And so it doesn't have that tag. Um, and so I was going through and kind of specifying, okay, grab this region and grab this uh, type of cheese and all these different things. But I kept finding more things that, oh, this cheese has synonyms and oh I'm not grabbing the synonyms and so that was one where I'm like okay no I just want to grab all the bullets and then I'll clean them up later to find out what different bullets there are um so that leads into 
Um, you can select finer grain things and, and like fancy, do more than just doing tables. Uh, HTML elements is the other tag that I was, I've been alluding to that finds all of the matches for whatever you're giving it. And a good rule of thumb is HTML elements, you'll want to do uh, once to get all the observations. So you're, you're, that's kind of your high level thing. Uh, I want all the divs or I want all the, we'll look at different examples here. I want all the separate things, the items in a list of, um, you know, like products. I want to get one, use HTML elements to find the block of thing that is a product. And then within that, I'll use HTML element over and over to get each observation for that product. And so we'll see what that looks like. Um, similarity with uh, mutate or map, I guess, because it's it's applied to each element or row. Yeah, yes. And so, yeah, the, the yes. Um, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense when we have some example code, which um, I'm, <laughs> I am certain it's here. I've been working between this chapter and the chapter of my book that's similar. And so uh, hopefully I didn't screw up and not put it here, but I think we have it here. Um, so we'll see in a second. Um, before we see it, the other functions that we need to know about, is there's HTML text for raw text. You probably don't want this, but if you are trying to get um, like the special characters that are in uh, text or, or you're trying to find out whether, what parts of it are in bold and what parts are in italics and things like that, then you can use HTML text and it'll grab all of that info. And then HTML text two strips out all the extra info and just gives you the text. Um, almost always, this is what you want when you're scraping web pages, but occasionally you want something separate. And then HTML adder gets um, an attribute value. So for example, um, oh good, we do have a link. Uh, so here, this is a link and it has href, which is the URL that this thing points at. Um, a lot of times href will be an attribute that you're trying to grab because you want to find the next page that you want to scrape. This example is not that great for it, but like if we go up here, uh, oh, that X, oh yeah, there it is. Um, this a tag, so a means an uh, anchor, uh, which can be a link or it can be like a specific page on this page to go to. Um, this is actually, it's fancy because it's handled with uh, some code under the hood. I guess it's not a normal link because this href is just pound sign, which means nothing basically. So bad example to use, but uh, a lot of times you, you want href. Like that's going to be the thing you're going to want to get. Um, I don't remember why I don't show it here, but there's also HTML ATTRS, which is it'll get all of these attributes from that thing that you have selected. So you'll pull them out as a list. So a named list with all the different pieces. When you're doing an exploration, that can be helpful to figure out which piece you're looking for. It's like, oh, I wanted the title. That's where they actually say that it's GitHub or whatever. Um, but most of the time, HTML text two and HTML adder are what you're gonna use. Uh, just to review real quick, do, 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 do. Uh, these are the attributes. So the things inside of the tag that are like more information about the tag. All right. So, all right, there's this Star Wars films data set that is on the RVS website. Um, and it, it's uh, clever that they have this thing that is a vignette um, that goes on to the package on website for RVEST. And the only purpose of it is to give you data to practice with. And so we can look at this and see um, each film is in a section tag. Um, and then, you know, it has different data inside of that section about uh, the director and the, um, uh, the crawl, the opening crawl text. Yeah. So that's, you know, what it shows at the beginning of the movie. Um, oh, and the release date in the title, obviously. So we load up that URL and read it um, and then get HTML elements section. That's going to grab all of these uh, different section tags, each one of which is a movie. So that's our um, observations, our rows 
of our data table. And so when I print that out, uh, this is what it looks like an XML node set with seven elements. It's like a special kind of list uh, until you do um, one of these functions, you're still working within this special object that is a um, like map of the web page. And then within that, we can already kind of see that there's, you know, it has these IDs. Each H2 is the title. Um, and then there's like different paragraphs. That's what P stands for uh, that are information about it. Um, and they had like different spans that we saw. Um, dig back in here again. There's just P that has released at the beginning. So we're gonna have to find a way to find that. And there's this P that has or a span class director. Okay, that's gonna be some info. Um, and so we can find that that was an example that he used is class director is the director of the movie. And so we can do dot director dot means class director is the class that we're trying to grab and grabbing the text out of it and we can see that that html element got one element for each section uh and got all the directors so all right um i kind of fast forward just putting that together that we take that section so we're making a tibble and the title is that section and we get the h2 element and take the text out of that if we look at that that is um this piece right here oops let's go to the one that i'm hovering over so h2 and then text oh something we don't see here but um something that's nice about this html text 2 function is if if you get something that contains something that has text and then it contains another thing that has text and it has a whole bunch of different pieces it just kind of stitches that all together. So if you grab this whole block and like if we did HTML text two on just the whole section, it would be one blob of text that has all all of uh, this text, like all of it combined into one element, which might be what you want. Like a lot of times you want to more, go more fine grained than that, but that again, it can be useful to do that right at the start and kind of make sure that you have the text that you're trying to grab. Um, released we're looking for this uh, p element and then removing the word released um, and we know it's the first paragraph and so that's how this is working that we're just trying to get html element p within section the first one is uh, the release date so cool uh, director is again what we just saw that we're looking at dot director and then intro is we're looking for the one that has class um, crawl Oh, and that one, yeah, shows the example that it's actually multiple p tags inside of the div, but it gets all of them and strings them together. And so if we look at the result, um, it's cut off, but trust me <laughs> that it has all of the text. Um, release actually didn't work. I wonder, I must have a typo. I'm sorry about that. Uh, uh, oh, I'll bet the dates aren't. I'm not sure what happened there. I'll have to check the notes. Sorry, I did not notice that, that it isn't properly grabbing the tags. Um, something that it does show here is uh, Readar has all these parse functions that can be useful, except when um, you have a typo or something and screw it up, that uh, it, it will parse the date or parse the in, uh, an integer or parse you know different types of values out of the strings that you're returning. Um, that's what Readar uses to when you tell it this is a date column or this is an integer column or that kind of thing. And so you can use those to kind of uh, quickly and easily convert uh, whatever is coming in. Because something that I didn't stress in here is that like everything is text in HTML. It's just giving you a big text document. You have to tell it, well, yeah, but it's text, but it's an integer or it's text, but it's a date. Um, and so you have to tell it to uh, how to parse things. Okay, but not sure what I did there. Um, so he has a whole section in the book about selector gadget. It can be useful, but I really highly recommend learning to look at the CSS because um, it's like more reliable. 
and it's useful to learn a little bit about CSS because that's also what you use for styling um, web pages, which also means like Cordo documents and Shiny apps and anything that's on the web uses CSS for uh, how it looks. And so it's useful to get at least a little bit familiar with it. Um, he links to this website, CSS. He's, he has a typo in the current version of the book. It says CSS Dinner. It's actually CSS Diner. This is a really cool, um, it's actually remembering where I was the last time I went through this, but um, it's uh, like a little game. Uh, and it starts by, you know, it says, okay, there are these two plates and it says, uh, select the plates. And you have to type the thing that will select the plates. It gives you info about how it works and shows you the HTML. And so um, I think I just need to go table. No, I don't remember. All right. Uh, oh no, because I want the plates. Anyway, I don't. I don't remember right now, and I don't want to just go through this. But uh, go through. Um, go through that. I recommend uh, when you're not live on camera. Um, there's also the Mozilla Developer Network. Uh, they're really great. Of um, they have all kinds of documents, reference documents about like everything that has to do with the internet, um, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, a whole bunch of other things. And so uh, it has the full reference of everything about CSS so that if you're doing a lot of web scraping, that's a great place to look. And then um, you can come to our book club on Wednesday. Um, and this is not currently here, but uh, well, it, an older version is that we'll be talking about my version of this, where I go into some of the stuff that he specifically mentions in our 3 uh, that is not covered. Um, specifically, I'm going to go into um, well a little bit deeper dive into the stuff we looked at just now. And then um, there's some new stuff in our vest for dynamic web pages or web pages that you need to like log into, different things like that, where it's a little bit more complicated than just grabbing something from uh, from the open. Um, that's it. That is the chapter. I did. I left. So a lot of the chapter is like really specifically showing how to clean the data once you get it. But I feel like that's the rest of the book. So I didn't go into that in the notes here. Um, I wanted to focus on the HTML side of it. But I, I do think like the one thing if you're going to take it or one takeaway is kind of over select and uh, clean up inside of R because it's it, you can't like especially if you're going through and scraping um, a whole bunch of web pages like you set something up in a loop and you're scraping hundred different web pages if you miss something you can't go back and well you can go back and get it but you have to rerun it you can't just get that one little piece whereas if you get too much you can get rid of the stuff you don't actually use so um, I'm a big fan of working that way with this sort of thing. Any questions, comments? Very interesting stuff. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not used at doing this. So. Yeah, I uh, I didn't used to be so used to it, but I uh, took over Tidy Tuesday a couple of years ago and um, many weeks I end up using Arvest and scraping some data. You know, we try to find things that people have already compiled, but sometimes there's just something that's too good not to go get ourselves. And so I've done a fair amount of it. And it is funny, um, both presenting in the book club and then even more so writing about this. I, I went back and looked at some of the stuff I've done with Tidy Tuesday and like, oh, I don't want to use those as the examples because I need to rewrite those. They could be so much better, so much cleaner. For a key example being the over... Um, over committing to what I am grabbing uh, instead of grab it and then clean up at the end. And so um, also that there are some functions that change names and I, I use the old names because uh, I didn't realize that they had changed names until, I don't know, sometime in this <laughs> journey of reading all these things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really useful. Like uh, Wikipedia often has, you know, tables of data that, if you know how to get it, it's easy to do. Something I talk about in my book is there is the, the package uh, data pasta that, or yeah, 
data pasta, which is for, you can copy paste things from I mean, anywhere, but specifically the internet, it's often useful. Um, a lot of times if you're trying to scrape data and it's just one table on a page or one, whatever, one block of data that's on a website, just, you know, control C and then <laughs> use that data pasta uh, package and it will clean it up for you when you paste. Um, but if you're trying to scrape pages and pages of data, uh, doing that by hand usually isn't worth it. Um, again, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in my club, but even if it's like five pages of tables, it's just five pages of tables, I'd probably recommend just using data pasta and rather than figuring out how to scrape it, um, cause it's easier to clean that up. Um, but if it's something you're going to be hitting a lot, if it's something you want to automate, or if it's something that has many, many pages, then scraping is definitely the way to go. Or, or if it's more complicated layout, like um, the, the cheese data that I'm working with has like these blocks that are, um, well, number one, it is many different pages. And then they're not a table. They are a bulleted list that has data kind of embedded inside of sentences and stuff. And so that's something where using our best is working pretty well. Yeah, it strikes me that with actually just very few functions, uh, there is this uh, amount of flexibility. Yeah, um, so I there there's technically even more flexibility. You know, a lot of the flexibility comes from these CSS selectors are so flexible and you can do all kinds of different things with them. Um, there's technically all of the uh, HTML element and HTML elements things can take the CSS like we show here, or they can take uh, another type of selector called XPath. Um, it's, I think it's older, uh, it's different in any case. And I, I don't go into it and he doesn't go into it in the book because you can do, I think you can do all the same things with CSS or if not, CSS with like string R, you can do everything that XPath can. And CSS is also useful for styling. And so I think that's something that as an R user, you're more likely to need styling than you are to use XPath for anything else. Um, but yeah, there's actually even more flexibility from this handful of functions. And again, we're not going into, there's a whole um, uh, HTML live thing that they added in the most recent version of Arvest where uh, it works with the Chromote package. It runs a, a version of Chrome in the background so that you can like navigate the page. You can say, okay, load this page, then click this thing, then click that thing, then type this, then select the data. Um, that's again, I'm gonna talk about that in my club. Um, that part wasn't ready when they wrote this chapter of this book. And it's, you know, it's very um, much more, much trickier to work with. Uh, and so, um, you know, won't always work. I, I think I had one tidy Tuesday. I don't, I was using an early version of that function and I had to write some JavaScript to work with it, which hopefully you wouldn't have to do normally. Um, but in order to dig deep into the page and get the data that I was trying to get, um, which again, it was, it wasn't that they didn't want you to, it's just that they weren't, it, you know, it wasn't created by a data scientist. And so the, the data was really hard to get to, um, but they wanted people to use it. Uh, and that is one of those things where um, that polite package didn't click through and go get that. Uh, it's really useful for um, working with this. So this polite package, what it does is uh, it has these extra functions that you can say, you start with bow, you say, okay, look at this website. Um, and what it will do is it'll go through and try to find, does it have anything on that site that tells you how to scrape? Tells you how often to hit it or which pages you are not allowed to scrape or things like that. And then you have the scrape function, which is kind of, it's basically read HTML. It's, it like does that piece, um, but it'll put in pauses and it, caches results so that if you go back to that same page, it doesn't reload it, it uses the cached result. Um, and then, you know, he's, these are the old versions of the functions. This is HTML element, and this is HTML elements using the old name. 
Uh, it's using HTML text because HTML text two didn't exist yet when he wrote this. Um, but so this is a useful package to learn about. I, I um, haven't used it that much myself. And so I am learning it uh, as we speak to get deep into how to work with it. It is kind of funny because um, if you play with it, uh, the examples that he has, I don't know if the website has changed or if he has typos or whatever, they don't actually work as written. Um, they, they seem to work, but they don't do what he thinks they're going to do. Uh, and so um, I'm doing kind of a more advanced or more extended version of what he has here. Um, anyway, so that's a good package to work with for for the being polite side of things. Just uh, I didn't dig into that very much, but you know, you if you are hitting a website over and over and over, that there's a name for that. It's a denial of service attack where you can like shut down a website by hitting it too much. Um, and you know, you probably don't want to do that if it's something that you like. And so, and most websites won't let you do it. They'll block you and cut you off and then you can't get the data. And so polite helps avoid that, that it'll, uh, like if the website, that there are ways that the website can tell you, hey, you're making too many requests. If it sends that back, Polite will say, oh, okay, I'll back off. And it like automatically pauses um, until you're supposed to come back, things like that. Um, yeah, and so I'm finding it really helpful. So go ahead. Yeah, it's something that the Google Drive and Google Sheets packages do as well. Uh, they, if yeah. they yeah. sometimes it doesn't work and mm -hmm. then uh, they wait for, a few seconds and they also change the length of those pauses yeah repeat it yes so the the good apis will tell you you can come back in you know at 149 and 27 seconds or whatever um and so like we've gone into that with uh hitter and hitter two there are functions that let let you just tell it you know respect what the server tells me basically and that's effectively what Polite is doing under the hood is it's using uh, the the more advanced um, API type functionality with, to hit the web page. It also is using, there's another package that it wraps that reads. Um, so if we go to, uh, like if we go here and go to robots.txt. So a lot of websites have this file robots.txt either at the top or within the folder that you're trying to scrape. Um, often it will have this info at the top, which is really helpful of, hey, you can go, you can use this um, API instead. And that will maybe let you get the data you want without having to hit us. And then it has specific projects that aren't, you're not allowed to hit. So specific folders, um, you know, tells you uh, like these, if you are this, uh, the, the Baidu, um, web crawler, then you have to delay a certain amount, different things like that. So it has all this info. Um, the Wikipedia one actually is like hundreds and hundreds of lines long. It's hard to find whether, you know, what do they want? What do they want you to do? Is this page I'm trying to go to blocked according to this? And that's what Polite is kind of automatically saying, hey, and it'll you know, give you an alert. Hey, you're not allowed to scrape this. Um, you can just like get around that if you really want to. Uh, like it's not going to stop you from doing it, but it's going to tell you that they don't want you to. Um, and again, you might get blocked if you keep doing that. So, um, yeah. But I I really like I've see, been seeing this more and more where it tells you here is how to learn about our API. You should use that instead. Um, and a lot of times APIs are hard to find information about. So if they put it in the robots, that's really nice. But, uh, that, you know, can get you the, the better, the deeper way to get into things. But if you're just trying to get a table, uh, you know, scraping is probably fine. Um, cool. All right. So next week, uh, functions with Gabby. It's very exciting. Starting a new section of the book. <laughs> Right. I'll see everyone on Slack. Bye.